if you've ever tried to print something um, with TPU that's really soft, like this 70A TPU here, you'll know that it's not easy or quick. You'll have to tune your printer, especially for it. And if it will print it, which a lot of printers won't, you'll have to do so very, very slowly. What if you could get the same result, but using a stiffer filament like this 95A from Newly? That is nonsense, obviously, but here's a thing that claims it can do that. This is VarioSure from Colorfab, and I assure you it's not named ironically. I could only get black. Um, let's go. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Colorfab is nearly impossible to get hold of in the UK, and it's not cheap either when you do. I bought this myself, and that would be using Patreon donations. So thank you to those who do support the channel. So what is this stuff? Why am I asking rhetorical questions when I obviously know? Or do I? Am I just reading the spec on the fly? Maybe. Basically, the claim is that this stuff starts foaming at 230 degrees C. So if you print VarioSure at 220C, it acts like normal TPU, which it doesn't. But if we're entertaining that idea, then okay. At 230C onwards, the stuff foams, which means its volume increases by 40 to 60 percent, which is quite a lot. If you think that through, it's not obvious at first what you would do to leverage that um, ability, because why would you want your part to be 40 to 60 percent bigger? I'll show you a half printed block that's 40 to 60 percent bigger. I had to stop this to save the machine from getting TPU all over the nozzle. This is not really ideal, is it? Um, but if instead of trying to foam it like that, what if you actually under extruded it by 40 to 60 percent? What you have then is less material put down because it expands to fill the gaps. You get the same overall volume, but less material in theory. And Colorfab thinks that this will give you a lower shore rating. And we're going to see if those claims are true. So I printed VarioSure on the Sovol SB07. Well, not initially. I started printing it on the Creality K1, but that idea went out of the window pretty quickly. The K1, in my experience, is a great printer. There's a review coming soon. It's probably next video. But this is not a machine that excels with TPU, at least not at the moment, and not for 92A, which this filament states is the hardness off the reel. You see, none of these Core XYs really are particularly talented at printing TPU. They have uh, these silly tubes that go from the reel to the back of the extruder, which for some reason we decided to call reverse Bowden, but this is why there is still a place for a bed slinger in your printer collection, like the SV07 here. This prints TPU perfectly, and I used it for all the VarioSure tests because I only had one reel of the stuff, and full disclosure, I do have connections to Sovol. They are a sponsor and a patron of the channel, but that being said, not one of the, I think, 30 plus test prints that I did for this video, none of them failed. We should probably stop waffling and start testing though, otherwise this will be another 15 minute video and I hate editing 15 minute videos. To test the sure hardness, I have this impenetrable box, which is practically a meme at this point. If you haven't seen this before, this is a sure gerometer. You poke it into a sample and it tells you the sure hardness in A's. That is the unit of measure, the A. To measure properly, you need a fully solid block and you have to push the meter firmly in on a flat surface and wait a known amount of time. So I have a test print that is literally a solid block that complies with the Shore Hardness Society's um, unified test standards. It's not very exciting. I did write squishy on the side though, which I think is allowed. These are printed with 100% infill, and for the control case, since TPU always under extrudes by default, that's not something I really want to go into. I've explained it before. It's printed at 105% flow rate at 220C, which is supposedly below the foam point of the Vario Shore. This piece is very, very solid. We should let the meter do the talking, though. It's supposed to be 92A. It's not. It's about 91.5. I will allow it. I'm feeling generous. Anyway, this stuff foams at 230C, so I did a whole bunch of tests. A lot of tests. Each one of these blocks you see took an hour to print, so that was fun. 
And then I measured the shore hardness of each block, I recorded it, and I plotted it. And that gave us today's sponsor. Well, no it didn't, but today's sponsor is PCBWay, who can, in fact, also print flexible materials for you. Look, flexible resin prints, without having to get into resin yourself. You can see that for this material, as with all materials, the flexible properties are available for you to look at. Here you can see that it's 60 to 75A sure hardness, which is really soft. This is equivalent to something like Recreus Filiflex, which I just complained about at the beginning of the video. This would be really cool to see, I think. Maybe I'll ask for PCB Way to make something in that and send it to me. We can have a literal poke at it with the meter. Comment below if you want to see that, and I will make it happen. You can also get TPU made, which is done by SLS and not FDM. So that would be cool to poke at too. That is also 65A. Also, what's a Poisson ratio? I have no idea. I think you're getting the idea though that PCB Weight is giving you all the information you need and more to choose the material that you want for your own designs. And it's simple to access this data by just clicking the link uh, that says show material description and there's a ton of info there. So all you have to do is upload your STL, choose your options and send it to PCB Way, and they will do the rest while you sit back and watch more of my videos. So that is a win-win really. Check the description below for links to PCB Way, and thank you PCB Way, for sponsoring this episode. So the plot here it is, that's some cool glowing lines as well. Excel has really come a long way. It is excelling at plotting this chart. The keen observer, assuming that you're still awake, you will notice that this is linear. It's always a surprise when a relationship is linear, especially when you're not expecting it, but I think I know why it's linear. Tell me in the comments if you think you know why, and we'll see if we both think it's for the same reason. Or maybe I don't know why it's linear, and I'm just gonna pretend I know when someone comments and tells me. But either way, it is linear. I've also got some new fancy scales that measure some ridiculous fraction of a gram that we don't actually need in this application. So I can plot the weights of the test pieces too. This is probably going to give you a strong hint why the relationship is linear. Interestingly, if you haven't already noticed, the color changes as well as it foams. This is documented and expected, and it makes sense. There's only the same amount of dye, and you're just spacing that dye out, aren't you? When you, when you inflate the model, it's like blowing up a balloon. It changes color. The fun thing is, Colorfab specs claim that the filament has an operating range of between 100% and 60% flow rate, which translates to a sure hardness of, um, well, the claim is a bit vague. I think the 55A maximum foamed that they state is probably theoretical and not related to the 100 to 60% flow rate. At least that's how it looks in my graph. I don't know how they've worked that out, but to achieve that, you would need to exceed their operating range a bit, but you can do that, it does work. And you can go a lot further. You can get reasonable layer adhesion and um, integrity of the part down to maybe 40A sure hardness in my experience. But that depends on the model and it probably depends on overhangs a lot too. I noticed that beyond the 40A mark, you can still print and you can go down significantly further, but you start to see the walls delaminating from the infill. There is a solution to this. You can use infill overlap in Cura here. Uh, this can be increased to compensate. If you're going to do this, it's easier to go down to one outer wall so that you don't have to worry about the walls delaminating from each other. There are, again, ways to fix this. You can move the walls closer to each other. I don't have room in the margin of this video to explain all that. And anyway, you wouldn't really be doing this if you didn't want a softer part, and a single wall will achieve a softer part. The bottom line is, I wouldn't advise printing this far out of spec for anything functional. It's a cool experiment, and it's interesting to see that you can, and it still works. The texture as well changes uh, at this kind of level. It, it, it sort of almost feels like a different material. This is kind of a rabbit hole though. For curiosity's sake, I tried doing some flow rate reduction with normal TPU, the newly stuff I showed you before, and I found that even though normal TPU doesn't foam at all, which we knew it doesn't, it does behave similarly when you reduce the flow. You can reduce the amount of material a fair bit before the same thing happens uh, where the walls delaminate. So I think we can probably assert with some level of confidence that when we look at this graph for the foaming TPU, you probably have a foaming section where the foaming TPU is performing uh, adequately and filling the gaps efficiently, and then a section where the integrity is still maintained 
or at least it looks like it's still maintained, but the additional gaps that you are creating by under extruding, they're essentially being filled with air and you just can't see that. I can't prove it, but I can take some macro shots, which kind of does prove it. Here you go. In terms of practical uses, well, this is actually really huge. You can dial in your shore hardness within the range of 92A to about 50A by just reading a graph and setting your flow rate and temperature. This is a game changer, like an actual game changer, not just a YouTube thumbnail game changer that turns out not to be a game changer in reality. Here's two rabbits, nothing changed other than one is here on the graph and the other is here on the graph. and one is significantly softer than the other. Here's two test pieces with a with a weight on them. This is literally pick your own shore hardness. Not just that, this is printing 50A shore hardness on FDM. Have you ever tried to print 50A shore hardness on FDM? No, you haven't. Why not? Because it would be near impossible. Now with Vario Shore, you can you can just print 60A. You can print 50A. Most direct drive printers without reverse Bowdens will probably be able to print this reliably. So there you go, that is Vario Shore. I normally do a summary, but I think the preceding rant was probably the summary. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.